Hi everybody, this is Noelle from Petite Garden Centers and it's spring, it's almost mid-April, not quite yet, but guess what? We've had such nice weather in March and April that the annuals are coming. They are popping, color is up and ready to go. So we're gonna show you a few things at Casa Verde today. We love being here and um, you'll see all the color that is coming your way soon. Now, let me just preface this by saying, it's still mid-April. We don't tend to start planting our annuals until mid-May, okay? So just be aware, still gotta be real careful about the temperatures out there for a lot of the annual crops. Some do a little bit better in cooler weather than others, but just be aware, it's not quite time to plant, good time to prep soil and your soil beds and your containers, get them ready to be planted. Okay, so we wanted to show you the lantana. We have a sea of lantana here. Um, you're looking at Landmark Lantana, the citrus blend, and then next to it is the beautiful kind of mixed rose Landmark. Um, it has a little bit of that primrose yellow in it. I love it. And then beyond that is actually the yellow Landmark Lantana. And then this one's a real cool one. This is called Bloomify Rose. And Bloomify is kind of neat because it actually never goes into seed and fruit production. It just keeps on blooming, 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 which is really, really nice. It's a nice breeding trait of that plant. But these guys, of course, are full sun, hot areas, awesome for all the pollinators. So if you wanna bring on the pollinators, Lantana we love. Oh, and I forgot my favorite part is, pretty good as far as deer resistance is concerned too. So in the ground, in containers, in hanging baskets, awesome. I want you to look up as well because they're on the move. They're moving through the conveyor belts right now, but all of the fuchsia are looking divine right now. And so uh, the fuchsia, all different colors, beautiful. Of course, the sun's just coming in through the greenhouse, so it's blinding Taylor, um, but the fuchsia, are phenomenal and of course great for part shade to full shade and hummingbird attractant awesome wonderful wonderful so lots of nectar in those little what we call ladies earrings sometimes too there's uh quite a few uh plants that aren't quite ready yet for example zinnias they're not quite popped up yet they're they're starting they're doing really really well and we tend to plant them a little bit later just because they're really easy to, to pop and grow, germinate and grow. Um, so they'll be coming, but they're not on this first shipment, you know, filling up the stores here, but we'll have more. And then we are headed towards some of the tropical plants as well. Terenia looks good, Bacopa looks good, ready to go. Namesia, awesome. Brachycomb daisy, I love that little guy. It's great little filler. Bidens too. Great little pollinator plant. Cannas, cannas, and more cannas. <laughs> These are canna lilies. And of course, the cannas are a big tuber, if you will, a bulb. And they are what we call a tender bulb. And so you can plant them even at your house. You can plant them usually end of March, beginning of April, pot them up in some potting soil, get them a little bit of a head start. They do like to be under lights. And then um, they start to fill out really well. And of course you've got all different colors you could choose from. Uh, it looks like mango, orange, yellow, and then also that scarlet red. So those are all really pretty. These are part of the Canova series. So nice compact, kind of a, a dwarf canna lily, but awesome for sunny spots, kind of moist spots as well too. The cannas can tolerate a little bit more soil moisture. Um, great for the hummingbirds as well. Oh boy, Taylor. <laughs> we didn't have this last year, but we have some beautiful flowering tropical plants. Um, they weren't out in this greenhouse last year when we were doing a preview and they brought them out here because they're getting a lot, a lot of sun. It, they're just gorgeous. So look at this doubled hibiscus, double petaled hibiscus. And I have all different colors of mandevilla and diplodenia behind me. Red, white, pink. Oh my gosh, so many different ones. 
All of these tropical plants are gonna be great for those full sun areas, really bright patios and decks. So check this out, passion flower vine. Now, there are some, um, if you will, perennial types that will grow in Northeast Ohio. This is gonna be a tropical type, okay? And the reason you can tell is the flower is so huge and, and just gorgeous. Um, but if you'll see these, and Taylor said, no way, we've got some. So Taylor will probably get you a close up here on this beautiful flower. And they kind of have a, a trilobed leaf to them, really good growers. The passion flower vines do like full sun, but they can grow very well in part shade, but they're so exotic. They're just such a cool plant. Lots and lots of buds. All these are budded up, but they're not quite blooming just yet. Hey everybody, we found the Bougainvillea hiding in the back of the greenhouse. Obviously there's, there's a lot of them back here. Um, and these Bougainvillea, they're, they're all trained on trellises. You're gonna see you know, a pretty thick um, stem, you know, to start out with, almost a trunk. And then they're kind of trained up to grow on the trellis. These are vines in their indigenous habitat. They really are a quite woody vine, but we also grow them in hanging baskets because those vining branches can, you know, trail over the side and look really pretty. Um, these guys are just budded up and full, full blooms. I'm gonna tell you again, full sun, um, but they actually like a little bit cooler. So if you have a sunny spot in the morning that you wanna put the bougainvillea out, they can tolerate a little bit cooler temperatures um, in the evening and they do fine, but they, they do very, very well in, in Northeast Ohio in the summer. So these guys are great. And then, um, you know, just don't forget to water them and don't forget to fertilize them because they like to be fed a lot. We found the sun patients. So these are your big flowering New Guinea patients, but you can grow them in the full sun or you could grow them in the full shade or you could put it in part shade too. So really any light aspect, you have all the colors of sun patients to choose from. And there's even that little yellow and green variegated leaf. So that one's really cool as well. It has a bright pink flower to it. And then I wanted to show you over to my right um, the new, we've got this yellow petunia and it's called Bee's Knees. And it is a non-fading, almost like bicolor yellow. Check this out. And it's not ready to go out just yet, but it'll be, I mean, it'll be ready in just a few more days to go. And then um, right next to it is Sanguna Blue. And look at that. It's like a deep um, kind of violet purple and it has a beautiful kind of whitish eye to it. Really pretty. It's almost like a silvery white. And of course, we always like our white euphorbia to go with anything. That one's actually Diamond Mountain. So that's the, the big fluffy one. We switched gears a little bit. We came out to the perennial growing area and perennial growing is a little bit different than annual growing up in a controlled greenhouse. So these greenhouses are just poly houses really no heat out here. We do have irrigation, um, but this gives you an idea of where we grow our cooler annuals. And so petunias definitely being one of them. This is a really pretty combo with a bicolor petunia. There's also a little white calabrachoa in here. And then there's some verbena that hasn't quite popped open yet. But those three are really, really good with sort of cooler temperatures. Again, I'm not talking freezing, but right around like the 45 degree mark and up, they, they do pretty nicely. So they're out here in the poly houses, just covered, but the sides are open um, at night. So believe it or not, they're getting a lot of you know, air circulation and cool air through here as well. So that's always really good for them. And then you can kind of see above me, we do have a lot of hanging baskets. My goodness, it, we grow thousands and thousands of hanging baskets. So they're all kind of in different cycles. They've been planted at different times. So they, they you know, mature and come out um, throughout the season. Um, this cycle looks like eh, maybe a uh, late April cycle um, that'll come out and be shipped to the stores because I'm gonna tell you there's a, lot, there's a lot of carts on the dock right now that are 
full, big hanging baskets ready to go. We're in wave, whoop, wave, and super tunia land. So uh, th this is a greenhouse dedicated to majority of petunias. I'm looking above, there's a little bit of mixed combos going on, but petunias, petunias, petunias all through here. As I mentioned before, petunias are a little bit more um, cool tolerant. Cool, not cold, but cool tolerant. So again, they're very happy in this greenhouse, no heat, sides rolled up and just enjoying the breeze right now. And um, you can see all the different colors of super petunias. There have already been flats pulled. So those are, those are going out to the stores, of course. And uh, yeah, just look all the way through, all different. So this is Mini Vista Pink Star. And you can tell, I was gonna pull up like a normal size. Hold on, I'll, I'll grab it. This is a wave petunia, but you can kind of see difference in flower size. This is more like a um, super bells or a calbrocoa uh, type flower size. However, whenever you see Vista on the tag, a PW Vista, they are a, a like a landscape petunia. They get really um, spready and wonderful and, you know, really fill in area. So when you're planting these, they're fantastic, but make sure you give them some space. And if you're planting a container or planting a hanging basket or something of that nature, again, give them some space and don't be surprised if they really take over because they really like to grow. I wanted to show you a new Super Bells or Calabrocoa, and this is called Coral Sun. And as Taylor does the close up on it, it has got the prettiest coloring. It's like tequila sunset. You know, it has the yellow in the throat, and then it, it has like a ring of orange and more pink um, as you go out towards the ends of the petals. But boy, talk about a hummingbird attractant, you know, just zeroing in right into that trumpet shaped flower. So cool. We're in a new greenhouse at Casa Verde and we were surprised. We didn't know what we were growing in here, but obviously lots of combo planters. Um, as you look down, as, as Taylor pans down, you're gonna see a lot of that yellow. That yellow color is Biden's and man, they've been loving this weather. So you see a lot of yellow combined with some of the purple petunias and so forth. So they're they're looking quite happy. And then I'm gonna have Taylor pan the other way. We have got Dracaenas upon Dracaenas. So Dracaena are also known as a dragon tree houseplant, but they're also known as spikes. So you see a lot of the Dracaenas um, sticking up through the, the combination pots, but also plenty of them um, to make your own combination. So those are gonna be out there too. And we also have the little papyrus too, Taylor, did you see it? So papyrus in the combos, that's usually what? Little Tut? Prince, Prince Tut, good job. So yeah, lots, lots is blooming and is gonna be coming your way really, really soon. Enjoy.